Uh, hey everybody, Wire here. Uh, um, like I promised, I uh, we're going to do a radio. Uh, this radio was given to me by a friend of mine. Um, uh, last last uh, last May he gave it to me. Uh, it's a Zenith B600. It's a Transoceanic. It's in really bad shape. Um, didn't come with any tubes. There's no tubes in it, but I do have tubes for it. Um, so we're going to do, uh, it, it, it needs a total restore, rebuild. I've got to do something about this stuff right here, getting this all uh, back together and cleaned up. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside, on the front. As you can see, it's a, it's a mess. Uh, the dial string doesn't work. The nice thing is, is is all the knobs seem to work okay. Uh, the band switch switches work. They do need to be cleaned up. And uh, we're, we're going to totally take everything apart on this and redo it. Um, these uh, Zenith started off with the 500 series in 1941, and they always and um, um, all the tube radios, all, all the 500 and 600 series, which this is a 600 series, went to went to 1962. This is the last portable tube radio made in the United States. Uh, this series here, um, like I said, you can look up. They made like six or seven different series on this. So, um, like I said, this is the last one. I've always wanted one of these. It's just they go for too much money on on eBay. Uh, they're like five and six hundred dollars, and um, like I said. This is in bad shape. Uh, we're going to see if we can get this all go, put together, and hopefully it'll be a successful video, or it might be a fail video. Uh, as you can see, it's got a retractable cord. That's not working. That's the inside. Um, when I got this, uh, I did open it up. And there was a mouse nest inside. Fortunately, the the mice didn't get to it too bad. It doesn't look too bad. Um, it doesn't smell or anything like this. You can see right here the retractable reel is shot. So we're going to have to take that all apart. And like I said, it didn't come with, with tubes, but I do have tubes. And let me see something real quick. Okay, the... The variable capacitor is a little is a little tight, but it is going around. We'll get that all cleaned up. And like I said, we're going to take this completely apart. So uh, let's get down to it, and then we'll start taking this thing apart. Yeah, but first thing we're going to do is uh, uh, we're going to have to disassemble some things in the back so we can remove the chassis from the front. Um, and there's a few things we have to take apart here, and able to access, <coughs> and able to access this. First thing we're going to do, thing we're going to do, is take out the wave magnet. Uh, this is in here, so you can take this out and put it anywhere outside the radio to get a better signal. And I don't know if I mentioned this, <coughs> this um, radio runs on batteries and. Uh, and AC, so uh, we can't get the battery for it anymore because it'll make it. There's a guy that makes a replica battery, but it just doesn't make any sense to get it. And we're going to fix this too because this this is not right. Okay, let's see what we got up here. Here's the wave magnet. And you should be, there's a suction cup missing, but that's not a problem. We can get those. So I think what we're going to do is as we take this apart, we're going to try to clean it up a little bit. Let me get something real quick. I'll be right back.
It looks like this came from a smoking environment. I can tell by the brown coming off of it. I just want to get the syrup and stuff off. And then we'll, uh, like I said, we'll take this all apart. Piece by piece. Clean and service every piece. And try to get this look new again. Or close to it anyway. And I will put a picture showing what this thing is supposed to look like in this first uh, series here. Um, this is going to be a couple parts because we're not going to be able to do all this in one sh in one uh, video. It'll be just too doggone long. I, I like to usually do the radios in two or three parts uh, depending on what's involved. This might be a four or five parter. So we got this out. On the top here. There's a Phillips screw dry screw here that holds this um tuning band band tuning coils and so when you press on the buttons it doesn't bend back. We have to take that out. Okay, this is the plug for the battery to operate the uh, radio and this plug here if you can see it wait a minute let me get down here a little bit for you this plug here is the dial light and we're going to do something a little bit different with the dial light and I'll show you at the uh, uh, when we get to that part okay okay the antenna unplugs like this I got a hand at the Zenith, man. They really did a good job of putting this together and being able to work on it when you had to. They, it really is. It was really nice how they did this. Okay. okay. We need to take the antenna out. And as you can see, one of the bolts is loose. Let me let me get this out and uh, we'll go to the front. I'll be right back. Okay, this is the front of it. It's it's a mess. Uh, I took the knobs off, the um, switch and the uh, dial hub, and uh, it's got a headphone jack in the front on this model. And in the real models, the headphone jack was in the back, and it's got two screws that holds the dial light switch in so we're going to take these out this one. Okay, there are seven screws. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, these top ones are a little longer than these bottom ones.
That one's been a little iffy to get out. Let me go find a different screwdriver. That one's just not working. Okay, let me finish these other screws and then I'll, we'll, we'll, I'll remove this front and I'll take that off too. I'll be right back. Okay, I got the screws out. I got the screws off of the dial light switch. I got the um, bolt off of the uh, headphone and this thing should come right out. Something is hanging up on this thing. Something else is hanging up on this one. I know that's all the screws are supposed to be in here, but Something else is holding it in there. Let me see what this is. I don't know what's holding that front on. It's supposed to come right off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the chassis and try to pull this out in front. There's two screws in these holes here that we can access so the, uh, we can um, loose, get the um, chassis out. And we'll see what's hold, what's holding that on. That front's supposed to come right off. There's one bolt. the other bolt. Let's stand this up and see if we can pull that out. This cloth is holding this on. Okay, let's put this down here. Let's get this out of here. We definitely have to do something with this cord because this is supposed to be retracting.
that broken reel is hanging up. Let me get this out and then I'm going to pull this out and we'll go over the chassis. This is being a bear for some reason. It's normally not. These aren't. Bears. Okay, I got it out. It was really a bear. This reel retractor was holding it up. Um, it feels like the spring is broken here. So I'm going to try to fix this. If not, I'm just going to take it off and we're just going to um, put a cord directly to the um, directly to the chassis. Because I'm not sure if I can fix this or not. It feels like say, it feels like the spring is busted. So well, we'll have to take that apart and see how that is. Um, the dial, the, all three dial strings are broke. So we're going to have to replace all three dial springs. Um, the chassis is really not too bad, but it needs a little bit of cleaning up. So uh, here's the headphone. Let me take a picture of this so I know how to put it back together. I don't want to bust it up. It needs to be re-soldered anyway. I might even rewire that myself. Put some new wires on it. <sighs> okay, this has a ballast tube in it. I don't know if you can see this. And what the ballast tube does, it limits the amount of current that goes to this, just in case there's a spike in the electricity. And underneath of here, <sighs> she don't look too bad. All original parts. It's got a selenium rectifier in it. Okay. We're going to um, test this and see what kind of voltage is coming out of it. If the voltage is not too bad, I'm not going to change it. If it is, I'm going to change it and put a, a, a diode, a modern diode in it. All these capacitors are going to get changed. And it doesn't look too bad underneath the here, other than a little cleaning. And um, recapping, and it looks like somebody else has been in here because this is a modern cap right here. Yeah, somebody has been in here. Um, yeah, so uh, let, let's um, let me flip this up and uh, we're gonna start doing this. What we'll do first is uh, I'm gonna try to gonna work on this, see if we can get this done first. And that'll be in the next video because I do have to put a new cord on it. This is shot. I'm hoping I can fix this. Anyway, fellas, we'll catch you guys the next time. And like I said, this is going to be a couple. This is going to be uh, a couple videos. Uh, believe me, I'd like to do this all in one sitting, but it's a lot of work right here. And uh, like I said, I always wanted one of these, and I want to make sure I do this one right because I'd like to keep this one uh, for my own collection. Anyway, fellas, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys the next time. This is Wire. See ya! Okay, this is a picture of what it's supposed to look like. Um, hopefully, um, mine will get close to what this is, so we'll, we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully, uh, the, um, the uh, radio itself, the circuitry, is in much better um, uh, condition than what the what the case was, is. Uh, looks like they left the case somewhere and moisture got to it. I don't know. Anyway, I want to give a special thanks to Radio Wild uh, channel. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't know how to take us apart. Um, um, so thanks a lot, Radio Wild. Uh, your video really showed me how this comes apart. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you on the next one.